let's look at the, uh, the current president, President Barack Obama. Here's a controversial clip from the Barack Obama inaugural. And I think this is, this is relevant. I have several relevant clips for people who are enthusiastic about UFO and UFO secrecy from um, well-known speakers. President Barack Obama inaugural address. Even greater cooperation and understanding between nations. We will begin to responsibly lead Iraq to its people and forge a hard-earned peace in Afghanistan. Played in reverse, I heard the president say, knows power of alien saucers. 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 And so, while war in Iraq was the hallmark of the Bush administration and colored events over that eight-year period uh, tremendously on a global scale, in fact, because of the coalition that was drawn in, the Canadians who have been serving, the British who have been serving in that war, I see a different formula for the next 48 years. I see that, you know, believe it or not, I, I, I feel that due to, just due to this one piece of information, it only took one piece of information for you to understand about the Iraq war, this one clip instructs me that this is really a time about contact with higher intelligence, reaching out to uh, understanding and integration with new sciences. The president himself unconsciously is, is using the word alien, but really it could mean higher consciousness. This is the era of reaching out for higher intelligence. Certainly we're in a time of tremendous turmoil in North America, economic and socially. We need to become more intelligent, we need information and answers. And so I see this as coloring the new administration tremendously. I stand by my story and uh, I feel that you know part of my coming into alignment with the president's unconscious intentions is to be here on the ranch this weekend to you know to begin to attempt that kind of contact. So I hope you all feel the possibility like I do that that could really happen. Um, let's let's go into some more of the UFO speakers here. There's some really interesting stuff. Uh, Dr. Edgar Mitchell commenting on uh, UFO secrecy in Europe and North America over decades. The reason for that goes back to the, the main instance really started taking place after World War II, when in the United States, at least, I can't speak for the European government, the South American government, all of them have recently started opening their files. And I'm sure most of you are aware that the government of France and, and many uh, governments uh, have actually been sharing their information with the public, what information have they collected on the UFO subject is becoming public knowledge. That kind of level of disclosure is still being attempted here. Maybe one day that will occur. In the meantime, a uh, very interesting coincidence because Dr. Mitchell uses the same, the same vocabulary, shares the vocabulary, the unconscious vocabulary of President Obama when he says, I feel the ships are alien. <laughs> President Carter, a well-known, like well-known UFO witness, but was President Carter actually on board a flying saucer at one time in his life? He was asked to comment on Dennis Kucinich's statements during the presidential debates leading up to the uh, 2008 elections. And he made this statement on CNN. Well, a UFO is an unidentified, unidentified flying object. And when I was uh, back as a peanut farmer... Back as a peanut farmer, he's talking about that event that was well documented. He witnessed something flying in the sky. But I really think there's more to the Carter story. And uh, this clip, I feel, discloses far more information than has been uh, part of the public dis discussion on the Carter. UFO contact. I hear President Carter say, when Saucer went out naked, going out, they'll put it in him. Is President Carter describing a scenario where he is disrobed and being subject to some kind of an implant procedure? Will the contents of this clip be verified when one day it's disclosed that President Carter does have, or did at one time have, some kind of an implant 
in his body. And we know that implant research and detection and surgeries are becoming more and more a part of the UFO literature. Uh, I believe, just based on this clip alone, I believe that President Carter is a part of the population that has been subject to that kind of an experience. So again, really these are just computer simulations. I can show you that I just derived the audio from his forward speech by reversing the graph and instructing the computer to play the reversed graph. The computer sampled the sound, created data points on a chart, I reversed the chart and said, play this back for me. I identified flying object and when I was uh... It's not that he's speaking backwards. Or is it? It's many, many clips. Um, let's see one more. Uh, going back to uh, forensics, uh, the Shuttle Columbia mission uh, that uh, broke up on return <coughs> to Earth. Uh, people say it was foam striking a tile that uh, ended up in the destruction of the shuttle. The final transmissions from the shuttle, Colonel Rick Husbands is talking to ground control, and you can hear communication that sounds like standard uh, chit chat about uh, flight conditions and, and, and so on. Max and GNC, you ready? Max, you ready? GNC's go. And we're ready, we'll wait, no tell us. Uh, in reverse, again, just like Bonnie Lee Bakley, Colonel Husbands anticipates death, and I heard the words. Sad, we're dying, this is it. So, the tone of the message seems to provide a form of irony. There seems to be some kind of a, a deeper uh, insight portrayed through the message, deeper in fact than the the standard communications, procedural communications that he's engaged with, with ground control. So how many people are starting to feel that we really are sharing information backwards? Can we just get a show of hands that there's, there's really something, oh, there's something going on. I, I think there's something happening. I, I, I really believe that there is something to this, and I, I find it empirical. I find that the evidence, just as James said, the, the evidence really speaks for itself. This is an evidence-driven inquiry. There's lots and lots of evidence. There's no shortage of evidence that this phenomenon is truly occurring. In fact, not only do they sound like speech sounds, not only can we uh, process those sounds and interpret them as, as speech, as language in our minds, but the information in that speech is not uh, chaos-driven. It's, it's orderly. It's organized. And it describes real phenomena real phenomena, as real as the Iraq war or the death by murder of Bonnie Lee Bakley. 